We all know and love the lamington. It's a part of our DNA. It's a part of this country's identity. And that's what I'm gonna be knocking out for you guys today. I'm even gonna to go to the extent of making the sponge. And why I'm making such a big emphasis on that is because I live my life as a lie. <laughs> I grew up on my nan's lamingtons, always in awe of how good they were. And once I started cooking and playing around with cakes and baking and sponges, I realized how difficult they can be. They're a little bit temperamental. So one day I said to Nan, you're really gonna have to sort me out with that sponge recipe. These lamingtons are off the chart. I wanna make them at home. To which she replied, oh love, I don't make the sponge. I, I get it from the supermarket. <laughs> My whole life, it was an earth shattering experience. And that's why I'm gonna make the sponge just to show that it can be done and you won't have to live your life with a dirty little secret. Okay, <laughs> there I, I said it. Okay, we're gonna kick this off. We've got three eggs. Stand mixer, so three eggs in here. Whisk attachment on. And this is really, this is the part where we're gonna combine the eggs and the sugar, but when you think that you've whisked them enough and they've got enough volume, keep going, okay? So we're gonna kick these off. We've got half a cup of sugar, and we're just gonna sort of shake that in bit by bit, about a tablespoon or two at a time until it's well and truly incorporated and we've got some serious volume in these eggs. It's so essential if you're trying to nail a sponge. So the key, key indicator or the best way to know if you've whipped these enough is to just grab a little bit off the edge there and rub it in between your fingers. And if you can't feel sugar granules, then you're all good, you're good to go. All right, so the next step that we've got is to add our liquids. We've got a teaspoon of vanilla paste. So using vanilla paste as well, especially in sponges or cakes that don't have other flavors, what the vanilla will help to do, it helps to hide any egginess because it's it's pretty much an egg based cake so any of these sponges just that little bit of vanilla will help i guess redirect your your brain to, to not taste any of the egginess you, you'll go straight to that beautiful vanilla flavor that will link up with the sugar we've got half a cup of milk we've got 120 grams of melted butter but we've let it cool so it's been sitting out here on the bench since we started this recipe you do not want to add hot butter into this mix because it will just, it will deflate the eggs, it'll destroy it. So we're just gonna pop that back down and just on nice and low, just sort of moving that through and whisking it through really, really gently to combine all of those liquids and then we can pop it off and we'll sieve in the self-raising flour. So we've got our milk and our melted butter and vanilla in our sponge mix here. So I'm just gonna remove that off and feel how light that is. That's exactly what we're after. Now, we've got our self-raising flour here. So we've got one cup of the self-raising. Just gonna place that in and keeping it low. We're gonna just gently sieve that over the top. We don't want any anything harsh coming over the top onto that sponge mix and it's already starting to sort of collapse and fold through. And now we just need to just like really, really take your time with this. So slowly, 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 just scooping off the bottom, any little lumps, just kind of tap them, just to distribute them. So if you pick up a lump off the bottom like that, just, and feather it out over the top, and then we'll just continue to fold that through until it's beautiful and smooth. We've incorporated all of our self-raising flour just got a little prepared tin here. So, again, stay nice and low, and we're gonna transfer that into the tin. And we're gonna go into the oven at 180 degrees for about 30 minutes. All right, so spread that out in the oven, 180 for about half an hour until we get that beautiful rise for our lamingtons. Our lamington sponge has cooled down nicely. It's at room temp. So now we can look at cutting it up into our lamington fingers. Then we'll make the icing into the coconut. You guys know the drill. So I'm just gonna start by going straight down the middle. 
So we'll just cut this into four. It's the easiest way. Start in the middle. So we'll get quarters happening. And then, and then we'll cut it into thirds. Yeah. All right, beautiful. So we've got them ready to go. Our icing mixture. So we've got two cups of icing sugar, some boiling water. So we've got about a third of a cup of boiling water, some cocoa powder, and just a little bit of butter in there. So I'm just gonna whisk this until we get that nice glossy icing texture that we're after. Keep whisking until it's really nice and smooth and there's no lumps. All right, so there's our icing mix just sorted. So now it's, it's exactly like crumbing. What we're gonna do, dip them in. So you're gonna have one one hand that you're gonna sacrifice, that's gonna deal with the with the icing mixture. And then we're just gonna get a nice even coating on them. Try and get off a little bit of the excess. And then drop them in, and then just over the top. And just give it a good, good pat, a good press. Make sure you've got nice coverage. All right, so now we'll just start to stack these up and repeat that process. Dunk them in, give it a nice coating. Lift it up to get rid of any excess and pat it down with the, the shredded coconut. If you want desiccated, you can. I feel like the shredded though, you're gonna get that, that uh, homemade flavor and style to it. There we go. And just continue to press them down, roll them over and stack them up. Right, we've got ourselves a pretty serious mountain of lamingtons there. There's only one thing left to do. Now, audience, take from this what you will. I still prefer one hand. <laughs>